Hi everyone and welcome to this video. This video is about sampling distributions. In this video, we will answer the question, why do sampling distributions cause the value of the standard deviation to change? And what happens to the shape of the sampling distribution as the sample size increases? So generally speaking, we let's say we have a population that is normally distributed with a population mean of mu and a population standard deviation of sigma. If we move from this distribution, which remember we have n equals one here, to a sampling distribution where we have a sample size of n and we're finding the average x bar of n data points, then all of a sudden, the standard deviation of our sampling distribution becomes not sigma, our population standard deviation, but sigma divided by the square root of n. So why does this happen? Why do we have to divide by the square root of n? So let's take a few minutes and think about these things. First of all, if we're working with mean and standard deviation, that means we're working with what kind of data? Well, that means that we have to be working with quantitative data. So why, you might wonder, didn't we divide by the square root of n when we were working with categorical or qualitative data? Well, let's go back and try to remember what the standard deviation was or is when we're working with proportions. So remember, proportions mean that we're working with categorical data. So the formula we used back then was PQ over N and then the square root of all of that. So one way to understand divided by the square root of N is that, remember, we were given our population proportion P and then we had to find Q and we were also given N. So one way to understand this is that dividing by the square root of n, when you're working with categorical or qualitative data, um, that square root of n is already baked in. Algebraically, this is equivalent to the square root of pq over the square root of n. So just calculating my standard deviation for categorical data, I already have that n in that equation. Okay? So when we move... Um, then to quantitative data, as you can see, you know, in almost all these examples, you're going to be given a data summary and you're not going to have a whole data set. Um, even if you were given a data set, you would be calculating mu and sigma using technology. So then um, we require this extra step where we take our population standard deviation and divide by the square root of n. So let's see if we can do an example and make some practical sense of why we need this square root of n there. So I picked this example here, um, which is talking about human male heights. So human male heights are normally distributed. The average height of male human beings is five foot 10 inches or 70 inches. And the standard deviation of this distribution is four inches. So you can see here, I've created this um, normal curve at instat crunch. So the mean is in the middle. Okay, this is my population mean of 70, and then each space is 4 inches as I move along here. Okay, so again, my population mean, I'm going to write it as 70 inches. Okay, again, remember that means 5 foot 10. The population standard deviation, we said, is 4 inches. Okay, and how many data points right now are we talking about? Well, the question says one man, right? So we're only looking right now at n equals 1. So what is the probability of a single person, single male human being, being 6 feet, 6 inches, 6 and a half feet tall or taller? So hopefully you can imagine 6 feet 6, right, or 6 and a half feet tall. That's a pretty tall guy, okay? So what I did is I went ahead and put that into StatCrunch. So using the normal calculator in StatCrunch, you can see down here that this is the area right here. So if I drew a line here at 78 inches and shaded the area to the right of that curve, okay, that gives us a probability of about 
2.3%. So that means that 2.3% of the human male population is six and a half feet or taller. All right, so now let's look at what happens when we change our N. Okay, so let's look at this one. So now we have, again, the same exact population mean. It's still 70 inches. That hasn't changed. The population standard deviation has not changed. This is still 4 inches. But the question they're asking us has changed. They're not asking us about a single man anymore. They're asking us, what is the probability of selecting a random group of 10 males whose average height is six and a half feet or taller. Okay, so that means what's changed? Our N has changed. So we're looking at this randomly selected group of males, right? So there's 10 people, 10 men in this example. Okay, and we wanna know what is the probability of their average height. So I'm gonna add up 10 heights and divide by 10. What is the probability of that average height being six and a half feet or taller. So you can see here that my standard deviation when I created this is no longer four inches. So what is my new standard deviation? Well, my new standard deviation, let's do it down here, remember is going to be my population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So that's going to be 4 inches divided by the square root of 10. And you are welcome to do that on your calculator. Okay, I've, I've, of course this is rounding. You're going to get an irrational number. But it's about 1.26 inches. Notice that it is decreased from our original example. So if I look at this, right, we have 70 and then we have 71.3, and then 72.6, 73.9. Well, where is 78 on this graph? Well, 78 would be way the heck out here. So that means the area to the right of that point is gonna be super, super, super small. And we can see that, hopefully you can see down here, I did this in StatCrunch, I typed in that the mean is 70 inches. I typed in my new standard deviation using the fact that n was 10. Okay, so we have to put our new standard deviation in there. And then I asked the calculator, okay, well, what is the probability of getting a value greater than or equal to 78 with this new smaller standard deviation? And I know this is kind of small font. Okay, it says it's 1.26. 0.2694e to the negative 10th. Okay, if you don't know what that means, that is scientific notation, and it's basically just 1.27 times 10 to the negative 10th. Okay, and if you wanted to write that in standard notation, you'd have to move the decimal place over um, nine times. Okay, essentially, the probability is zero. Okay, and the key here, of course, is using choosing a randomly selected group, which means that every male on the face of the earth has an equal likelihood of being put into this group. So we're not going to the NBA playoffs and picking a group of 10 men. We're not going to the big and tall store and picking a random group of 10 men there, okay? We're giving every human being, sorry, every male human being on this planet an equal chance of being chosen. And when we do that, we find the probability of them having an average height of six feet, six inches, six and a half feet is basically zero. So one of the downfalls of StatCrunch, one of the things that frustrates me is that um, if you're using this normal calculator, I haven't found a way to superimpo superimpose multiple normal curves on the same graph. And it's really important to do that because then you can see the shape of your curve changing. Right, so if I look at this shape right here, and I go back to the other shape here on the other page, they look exactly the same, right? The only thing that's changed here is the scale. You can see this goes up to 0.1. Over here, um, you can see this goes to 0.3. The other thing, right, the x scale, of course, has also changed, as I pointed out. 
So what would these two curves look like if they landed on the same exact graph with the same scale? Well, what I had to do is I had to resort to using Microsoft Excel. And if you want the copy of the spreadsheet that I used, I can give that to you and you can um, use the spreadsheet to graph um, curves as well. So let's look at this graph. So if we have curve where, right where we have n equals one, that's this curve right here. So how would you describe the shape of this distribution? Well, it looks more like a hill than a mountain, right? It's much flatter than the other curve. So what's happening to these curves as we increase n? Well, hopefully you can see that we're really narrowing this curve and it's getting taller and skinnier. That's the best way that I know to describe it as we increase n. Remember that the area under the curve is always one, right? Or 100%. So the area under the blue curve and the area under the orange curve are exactly the same. The difference is the way they're distributed. So again, if you look at the blue curve, you have a much shallower um, curve. It's um, much wider. And the probability of some of these extreme values is much larger. When you look at the orange curve, then we can see the probability of extreme values gets much smaller. And that's what happens as we decrease our standard deviation. We're literally decreasing the variability of our data set. So when we're at these extreme values, the probability of experiencing, again, an average of 10 men who have this average height um, is almost zero. And then it doesn't start increasing until we get much closer to the population mean. Hopefully this has clarified sampling distributions for you and it helps you understand why when we're using an n larger than one, we need to change the standard deviation of the population by dividing by the square root of n.